And, uh, I did notice this before, but this goes to the stop switch and th the wire is cracked right there. Definitely needs to be replaced. And I'm not sure what's going on up in here. And this feels like it's pretty bulgy, like they put a new plug on or something. So let's see if I can start it and go from there. See what happens. All right, guys, so tearing into this thing, this is what I found here. And even just testing the wires here, what I discovered before, remember, was that when I turned, when the sled was running and I tried to turn off, the engine and the power cut the power with the emergency switch, it didn't work. I pulled it out, I pushed it in, didn't work. Pulled it out, pushed it in again, it didn't work. So I shut it off the key. Well, these are open ignition systems. So when you push in the engine stop, emergency engine stop, it'll make the connection and ground out the ignition. So there's no more power. So that works right there. I'm not sure if, uh, well, I'll tell you the other thing I found. This is the the connector. So that wire right there is busted. I got a new one that I'm going to solder in. And uh, the other thing that I found was that this connector right here, which had the other end spliced in. I didn't realize it was spliced in, though. It was wrapped with a bunch of electrical tape, and I just assumed, like a dummy, you know, live and learn. Um, so that's obviously going to be something I check every time now that, uh, they, like I said, I thought that they just wrapped it for protection from, you know, the, the console here when you turn that, that rubs or whatever, maybe it rubbed a little bit, blah, blah, blah. So long story short, um, I unwrapped the tape there and I found that these, all three of these were butt connected and that's just not the way to do it. Well, when I was undoing the, the first wrap of tape, um, and I split it open and then pulled it apart. This one popped right out of there. So I think that this just came loose. Well, that led me to the rest of this. And um, like I said, I found this piece right here that had the, the crack in the, um, that's the ground. I believe that's the ground to stop spark. So that's obviously, you know, not good. That needs to be repaired. Like I said, I got a new end for that. I um, I have a new end for this one as well. So what I found in testing this stuff, though, um, what I did is I unplugged both of those, the three-prong plugs right there that go to the start-stop and the throttle safety switch, and so um, the sled ran fine. So, like I said, I started testing stuff, and you have your purple and brown wire. That's your 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 safety switch there. Well, your purple to black is your uh, your throttle switch leads and so it's open right now but when you pull the throttle it pushes in the switch and you sh there should be a change there and it's inconsistent so that's why i would start it up and it would be fine and then when i would start revving it sometimes it would go out on me and then if i played with it some more it would come back on so when you let off the throttle there should be a connection there reading some type of measurement like it is now but if you pull the throttle and then it goes away you let off the throttle and it it doesn't make contact inside that switch so that's why it was it would be messed up when i would start it or i would let it idle because it would be like that right there so i'm going to take it off and see if i can clean it and see if that makes a difference so because a lot of the times they just you know at least from my experience you know i've only been doing sleds here for like you know since early 2017 so you know i'm going on four years or whatever so this is you know i'm still in my learning curve so um you know getting to the point where i can remember most things is you know it's going to be a little while but uh so that's what i'm going to do uh, like i was going to say is from my experience these contacts inside this this switch here because this is one mechanism and it's got the up and down switch and then it's got a button that pushes this way. So when you push in the throttle, it pushes that switch in there. So I'm going to pop this off. I'm going to pop this whole thing off right here and uh, see if I can um, clean that, clean those contacts up. 
And a lot, like I was going to say, is a lot of times, at least the ones I've taken apart, they get really grimy in there. And the grease, there's grease in there that gets in the way and it just kind of solidifies. And then you give intermittent contact and, you know, they get moisture in there, corroded, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to take apart, see what I can do and go from there. I've taken them apart and fixed them before. So it's not like you have to get a new one. Getting a new one might be easier, but, you know, I kind of like to fix stuff. All right, guys. So this is what we're doing. Taking out this mechanism here. I've already unscrewed the top screw and then the bottom screw there and there. And then uh, this thing just pulls right out. And so you might have to give this a little bit of a wiggle when you're pulling it out. This is the mechanism here. This is your emergency stop. And then this is your, your throttle switch. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go ahead and pop that screw out, carefully spread these and pop the end of it off and see what we got on the inside there. Shouldn't be much different than the other ones. Oh yeah, look at that. There you go. That is the problem. But is it too bad to... Let's see. Want a little bit on there so it slides, but you gotta be careful you don't lose that ball in there, too. And you could even take a little bit of sandpaper if you wanted to. Might be a better option. These seem like they're pretty clean though. Sometimes you'll get carbon build up on them, or at least some contacts like this. And really what you want on here is uh, conductive grease, which I believe is like a graphite type situation. I don't know if that's what they have on here or what. And it's just old. So then you can just make sure that ball's in place. Definitely seems like a better design than the old ones. Similar. I mean, basically the same thing, but the casing is what I'm talking about. This casing seems a lot better. All 
All right, now we can even test the multimeter to make sure that we're getting proper contact here. Go ahead and touch our purple and our black. So now we're getting a reading. We push it in. So you want it to get that reading every time it closes. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, see if I can pick up some conductive grease today. So that way it doesn't wear this out too quick and it's uh, got some protection to it. All right, and then as far as the safety switch there. All right, cool. So that's that. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get some conductive grease and then put this back together. Uh, I got one new end soldered on. This is the other one. So this will get soldered on with heat shrink to these. And then we'll be good to go. This is the stuff that I picked up. It's carbon conductive grease and it's four sliding contacts. So got it off Amazon. It was like 20 bucks shipped, I think. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna Try a piece of wood here. This is our little test that we're gonna do. We're gonna see how conductive this stuff is. Cause it might just cause problems, I don't know. That's what it looks like right there. Just gonna spread it, I mean, just a tiny bit. Won't even have to put much on there. So just to show you, you touch the two contacts together and it shows that they're making connection. Now if you touch the wood, it's non-conductive. So even that little bit right there. So it doesn't show that it's making a connection. So it may be just enough to where it's not going to interfere with uh conduct or uh, creating continuity where it shouldn't so I think if we just keep it thin we might be in good shape either way we're gonna give it a test all right so all we're gonna do here really is just get enough of this to smear on some contacts to make sure there's some lubrication there. That's got plenty there. Like it's surprising that they didn't seal this whole thing up better. Almost wondering maybe if I smear a little dielectric grease on it, if that would be good. Shoot, even sealing it up with a little silicone probably wouldn't be that bad of an idea. But for now, we're going to go with the electric grease. Well, actually, for now, we're just going to make sure that it works without problems. So we got our contacts here.
Just done doing the console here. This is the throttle switch. But that's working so far. And then that is the emergency stop switch. Good deal. I definitely think that this would this stuff would be beneficial on the inside of plugs on contacts and stuff. Definitely. So let's go ahead and take this apart and see where all of our grease is. I think we put a lot on there, but. You guys aren't going to want to do this with this switch when it's cold because chances are you might break these tabs here. Okay, so that is where the grease is rubbing. So it looks like, so I assume it makes contact right there. That's interesting. Doesn't slide very far either. So it makes contact right here. And when it goes across these two points, that's where you get your connection when you, the throttle is depressed. When you compress the throttle, pushes it in, and then you lose, you break the connection there. And on this side, you have these two contacts that get pushed down. When you pull the start, sw the start switch out, it's straddling this point. So it's not making connection, being that this is open ignition. <clears throat> the purple wire will connect when you push the button in across this right here. And that'll send the signal to the ECU to disrupt the spark. So I think we might be good. I could probably just spread some on here, some on here, and then uh, leave that, and then maybe some here, and leave that. Should be good. That'll just give it enough lubrication to, you know, keep it from wearing extensively. So that's good. So I think right here, and there, and there will all be good. So it doesn't slide very far there. And I think what I'll also do is put some dielectric grease on the edge of this all the way around. I don't know how much that's going to matter because of that hole and that hole. I mean, I'd probably have to take this out. Which, eh, I don't know if I want to, just have to be careful. Could probably spread it on the inside there with the toothpick and be good. And then this, I can spread around that opening, around all four sides on here, that'll help. There. We'll lift that up again. Okay. 
Now, whoops. Well, may as well go ahead and do it right. Hope that's not gonna make it sticky. Like too sticky. Crap, wasn't he thinking about that? I mean, I think it'd have to get gummed up real bad for it to get like that. That doesn't feel too bad. I mean, that spring's got quite a bit of tension to it. I don't think I'll have to worry about it. Let's put a real thin layer in the rest of this. Well, the parts that don't slide, it's not a big deal. Yeah, don't lose that guy. It's not like this is going to get hit with a lot of snow or anything anyway. Test it one more time. Should be good. All right, and then uh, I think the last thing I'll do just put a little bit of this on the connectors. Just like that. All right, so then we'll just go ahead and put this all back together, start it up, see what happens. Can't really see it very well, but this needs to be up. Make sure that grommet's all the way in. There we go. And then we have two screws, which are just so fun to get in there. All right, so that's both of them. 
It's one at the top there and then one right below it. There and there. Okay, let's button the rest of this up. All right, let's go ahead and fire it up, see what happens. Alright, so I figured out why it was at such a high, high uh, idle. It's the throttle cable. There. So, I don't know if I need to reroute it somehow, but I mean, you know, you even tweak it a tiny bit. Like, if you bend it down like this, it moves it. So I think I'm gonna have to reroute that. I don't think that's right. Other than maybe getting a set of carbides on here and then doing a ski alignment, I think we're just about done with this guy. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, see if reroute this and um, make sure that is nice and loose when I have any problems with that. And then, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be getting some snow here soon. So, all right guys. Um, that is it for now. So if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit the alert bell, drop in and ask questions. If you guys have any questions or any comments, any, any ways that you guys can help me alleviate little stuff like this, let me know. Or if you just want to say hi, if you just want to say hi, drop in and say hi. Chit chat a little bit, I'm always down for that. So yeah, if you guys know anybody else that likes this kind of stuff, please make sure to share in social networking with family and friends. So all right guys, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Come on back. Take care. God bless.